Hello plant people, it's Nora the Lekker Queen here. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel. So I've got this jungle in my home of really, really large plants living on a moss pole with really, really large leaves. So how did I get this to happen? There are a few principles that I put in place. So obviously you've got a plant, so you start with a plant. And then these plants are living in soil, but they're not living in any kind of soil. They're living in a great aeroid mix, okay? That's the important thing. You need to have a fantastic aeroid mix. This is a really, really important step in getting your plants to look like that. If you haven't seen my video where I talk about how to make this chunky mix, just click on the link above and that'll take you straight to it. So that's the first thing. You need to have a great chunky mix. You also need to put your plant up on a moss pole when it's still very, very small. This is an important step because the area roots need to be able to access the moss pole. The, the area roots actually grab onto the moss pole the area roots get into the moss pole and create a secondary root system within the moss pole. So you've got your plant deriving nutrition from the bottom and from all throughout the moss pole. So that works really, really well. And that's really important. You can't just get a plant that's like a meter long, whack it on a moss pole and expect it to do this. That's not what's gonna happen. Nature does not like shortcuts. Guys, you need to put your plant up when it's small and get it growing within the moss pole. What's the other thing that I did? You need to have adequate light. Obviously light is a very important aspect of everything. So you need to have your plant be able to have light. So if you, you've got large windows, put your plant, you know, a good distance from the window so it's not direct sunlight, give it some nice indirect sunlight. If you don't have adequate light in your home, Grow lights, invest in some grow lights. Grow lights are your friend. And for example, I'm living in Melbourne. We're coming into winter season now. I'm having my grow lights on now because the light that's coming through my windows is very inadequate. Remember, these are plants that grow in tropical climes. We need to be able to provide that same conditions, those same conditions in our homes for them to do what they would do in their tropical environment which leads me to the next thing, and that is humidity. It's important that the plant have access to, your, your home is nice and humid. So I'm not talking about, you know, 18, 90% humidity. My home is usually about 60% humid. And if it's not, then I've got my humidifiers on. So humidifiers are your friends if your home is on the dry side. But it also helps to actually group your plants together. So for example, I've got my whole jungle here. They all live next to each other. They're perspiring and it just creates a lovely ecosystem around them. So they tend to be a bit more humid than they would be if it was just one plant living in a solitary corner. You know what I mean? What is the other thing? You need to feed your plants. You need to fertilize. Some people just like fertilize at the beginning of spring and fertilize again at the next beginning of spring. Plants need to eat. They're like you, they need nutrition. In order for them to grow, they need nutrition. So I fertilize my plants with this product right here. It's called Growth Technology Foliage Focus. And yeah, I mean, the name says it all. It focuses on the foliage, so it gets the foliage to grow. It's got all the 12 essential minerals that a plant needs to complete its life cycle. It a plant needs to grow. So this works really well. I just make a simple dilution of five mils of this to one liter of water and I water my plants as I need to. So sometimes it could be once a week. It just depends on you know the climate that you're in and what's going on in your home. But in addition to watering the soil, I also make sure that I keep my moss pole moist. And I keep my moss pole moist with this same solution. So that five mils per liter in the soil, in the moss pole, same thing. Because remember, you've got the area roots in the moss pole, so they need to access that nutrition as well. You can also use this actually as a foliar spray. A foliar spray is another important aspect of actually getting your leaves to get bigger because the surface areas of leaves is actually quite large. A leaf is very large and the plant can use the leaf to absorb nutrients through the leaf. So you spray your plants 
with a foliar spray. Foliage Focus can be a foliar spray if you dilute it to about three mils per liter. So instead of the usual five, you make it three. So three mils per liter will make that a foliar spray. You can also use um, specialist foliar sprays that are available and just spray down your plants. And so they've got nutrition from the roots and they get nutrition from the leaves. This is the foliar spray that I use. It's called a Growth Technology GT Foliar. And again, it's got a little spray nozzle and you just spray away, spray away, spray away, and your plants access nutrition via the leaves. So that works really, really well. So all my plants that I've shown you today are living in soil and they're loving life. They're living on a moss pole and I make all my own moss poles. If you haven't seen any of my videos where I show you how to make a moss ball, please click on the link above and that'll take you straight to it. There's no secrets. There's nothing like having a green thumb. It's simply providing a plant with what it needs and it will grow. Today, I am going to be giving you a tour of my moss poles. And this is a tour of my moss poles of my plants that are living in soil. I don't have too many of them, but they are by far my biggest ones because by the time I started transitioning my plants to semi-hydroponics, these babies back here were way too big for me to even attempt transitioning. So I've let them grow in their soil and they're doing fantastically. And I want to show you what they look like. This plant right here is my Snow Queen. I don't want to get bogged down as to what it's called and what it should be called and all the rest of these. We call this plant a Snow Queen in Australia. I know you guys in the US call it an Enjoy, but I will call it a Snow Queen only because that's what we call it. Look at the size of the leaf on this baby. She is growing so, so well and is doing really, really well. I'm just really loving how that has turned out. Look at how that's where she started, right there at the bottom. And you can see the size of the leaves here. That's so much smaller. And as the plant gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the leaves get bigger and bigger as well. This plant has done really, really well. I'm so, so proud of her. Look at that. It's just, it's just absolutely fabulous. What can I say? I've got more than... There's more than four vines actually growing on this one and I'm really loving how she's taken off. So that is my Snow Queen or my Enjoy. Next to my Snow Queen is my Marble Queen right here. She's done absolutely fantastically as well. Uh, this plant is actually taller than I am and the leaves are bigger than my head and she's doing really, really well. And I'm just really loving how she's going. There's more than two vines on this plant and it's, you know, still got lots and lots of room to grow. Um, yeah, I could let it go all the way up to the ceiling. There's a bit of leaf damage on this one because I took my plant outside and I just left it there for days and days and days. And you know, some days it's hot, some days it's not, and they've got a little bit of leaf damage because these leaves are used to being inside, but that's fine. The new, the new leaves that are gonna come out will be okay. So, you know, that's, that's not really a problem. Um, but yeah, that's my Marble Queen. I'll show you what she looks like from the bottom to the top. So that's the top. And that's what she looks like moving all the way down to the bottom. And as you can see, the leaves at the bottom are a lot, lot smaller than the leaves at the top. That's what she looks like. And next to my Marble Queen is my Silver Sword. This is my Philodendron Silver Sword. Look at those leaves and how they just look so much like a sword. They're really lovely and elongated. And um, again, this is a plant that started off life in soil and I put it on a moss pole and there's about three vines on there and it's just growing and growing and growing. There's still a lot of room on its moss pole for it to get bigger and 
yeah, it's just, it's, it's really, really looking good. That right there is my, look at that. That is my silver sword. And it is just about similar height as I am. And those vines are doing really well. And yeah, loving life on a moss pole. So that's another one of my moss pole. So that is my silver sword. Next to my silver sword, I'll bring that forward. My Skindapsis exotica. I just love, love this plant. It's come all the way to the top of its pole and I'm now just letting it trail. You can see that's just everywhere. And I really should be pinning this down to the moss pole, but you know, I haven't quite got round to, you, to it yet. But that's, that's it. It's, you know, I've got vines going everywhere. That is my exotica completely covered the moss pole. You can't actually see the moss pole. And this one's loving life as well. I'll show you what she looks like from what she looks like from the bottom to the top. So that's her right there at the bottom. And she goes all the way up. You can hardly tell that this plant is actually attached to the moss pole. Now here we have my green dragon. That is a green dragon. Look at the size of that leaf right there. That's my hand, that's a leaf. And this plant is taller than I am and it goes all the way up to the top actually. And again, this plant also has two vines growing there, doing really, really well. And yeah, I'm just really happy with its progress and I will show you what it looks like from the bottom to the top. So that is that down there as you can see the leaves are a lot smaller and as you go up and up and up they get bigger and bigger and bigger and that plant all the way and that's the top of that plant right there I can just barely reach it so that's that uh, pothos green dragon is doing really really well I'll just move that one to the side so we can go on to the next one this baby right here, this one is actually my largest plant. This is my Epipremnum Golden Ivy. It is huge. Just look at that leaf. This is where I am and the plant just gets bigger and bigger. Look at that. It's, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. I love this plant. She has just completely exceeded my expectations of what's possible when you're growing indoors. But what she's also done is shown me what's possible when you're using a moss pole and how you can get a plant to grow from its juvenile form and get it to mature indoors. So this is my golden ivy with its huge, huge, massive leaves. Some of these leaves are larger than 50 centimeters going across. It's just, it's just absolutely fabulous. I'll show you what she looks like right at the top. So that's the top and that's the ceiling and those are the really really big leaves and those that the, the yellow one is the newest leaf but it's just it's just growing and growing and growing. It's amazing. I want to show you the thickness of the stem. Look at how thick that stem is. That's that's just absolutely amazing. That's my hand there, and that's how thick that stem is. But look also at the variegation on the new stem there. Look at the variegation on the stem there. You've got that stem becoming a lot yellower than it was before. So if I follow that stem down, it's green, but the stem starts to become more yellow as you go to the top and that's matching with the leaves. So that's, that's a really interesting phenomena actually. I hadn't noticed that before until today. Um, but yeah, that's just absolutely fantastic. A bit of leaf damage with the leaves right at the top. And that's because again, I put this plant outside and it got a bit burnt by the sun, but you know, that doesn't really matter. As you can see, the new leaves are just fine. So yeah, I just really love this plant. I'll show you what she looks like from the bottom 
to the top. So that's how we started. That's how small that plant was. That's the bottom. And then as you go up, the leaves get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's all in the climbing and it's, yeah, I just, I can't believe that this plant has gotten to this point. So this is my absolutely massive golden ivy that I'm so, so very proud of. Now, what's next for this plant? It has gotten to the top of its pole and I can't extend it any further because it's really huge. What I'm now going to do is chop it up and I will show you how I do that in a coming video. What is next? I've got another golden ivy. I'll show you this one. This golden ivy right here is a lot smaller than the one I've got behind me, but it's still doing really, really well. Um, it was really tiny when I started. It's on a small moss pole and it's multi-planted as well. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at the size of that leaf. Just look at that. It's huge. And it's also starting to become more variegated. You can see the leaves becoming more yellow as it climbs. So I'll show you what she looks like from the bottom to the top. So that's what this plant looked like from the bottom. It was really quite, the leaves were quite small and then up it goes, up it goes, up it goes. And you can see the jump in leaf size from about here and the leaves start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So here they're still a bit small and then it just jumps. And then from there, the plant just takes off and the leaves become massive. Well, that's it. We got here in the end and from myself and my lovely plants, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.